guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's content I'm going to do is going to be an industry update and hopefully this will become sort of a regular uh, part of our, of our content on a monthly basis. Uh, maybe at the end of the month uh, we'll try to cover, you know, press releases, industry news, stuff like that, that may come up during, the, during that month. So here we are in November, at the end of November, it's the last day of the month um, and I've got about eight different uh, items that I want to go through. Uh, that all came up um, um, very recently, so, except for the last one, which is not new, but we'll get to that. All right, so first up, um, from the Japanese high-end manufacturer Esoteric, at the Tokyo Audio Show on October the 28th, they unveiled three new models that will become available for distribution in the 2023, the upcoming year. Now, those models are going to be designated as the Grandioso C1X Solo. Now, this is a one-box line stage preamplifier. Um, the preamp is basically a scaled-down version of the C1X, which is a, a two-box um, a line stage, and I'm assuming maybe it's just designed to save space in a rack. Uh, if you can combine the power supply plus the preamp you know, circuitry all into one box, uh, you've, you've saved some space. So that is going to be one of the products that's coming out. No idea what the price is yet. I checked with the source. Um, they're not certain. Uh, I don't think the price has uh, really been um, uh, set for public distribution at this particular point in time. And no word on the expected ETA in the United States at least. So it's coming in 2023, but we're not exactly certain exactly when. Uh, if this, like anything in the Grandioso line, I would have to guess if, if I'm speculating it. You know, we're probably talking something in the mid five figure range, uh, 50 and above. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. The second product that they debuted or unveiled at the Tokyo show uh, was the Grandi Grandioso S1X Stereo Power Amplifier. Uh, this is a Class A power amplifier, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe its rated power output is between 50 and 80 watts, depending upon your speaker impedance. So if it's an 8 ohm speaker, it's probably 50. Four-room speakers, more likely 80. I don't know anything about the specifications as to whether it's stable at two ohms. Um, I'm sure that information will be provided uh, by Esoteric uh, at some point in time when the product is ready uh, to hit the market. Uh, lastly, they unveiled a new uh, Super Audio Compact Disc CD, Redbook CD player, and that is the um, K05XD. Uh, I'm not certain exactly um, what it, um, what kind of upgrade or, or uh, it might have over the older models, but that's certainly going to be uh, a new offering as well. So if you're an Esoteric fan or you're looking for some new Esoteric equipment, uh, keep your eye open in the coming year. There will be three new products hitting the market. Uh, maybe one of them's got your name on it. And in other Esoteric news, uh, this was released just on November the 28th, so it's very recent. Uh, they have announced a firmware update. It's firmware version 2.01, and that is to fix a bug in their NO5XD network DAC preamplifier. Apparently, there was an issue with the remote control power button not actually cycling uh, the unit itself, and so this firmware update is supposed, supposed to fix that bug. Okay, so that is it for the esoteric news. Now let's move on to the next story. So Conrad Johnson has uh, is unveiling or will be unveiling a new uh, stereo preamplifier. This is an all tube design. It's supposed to be brand new. It's going to be designated as the ART or the ART 88. Uh, as I said, it's an all tube design. It's really been under wraps. Not really certain about what it's going to look like yet, uh, but it is available for pre-order at the price of twenty eight thousand. So if you are a CJ fan and you're in the market for a new preamp, keep your eyes open. I understand they're taking pre-orders for it, so you can visit conradjohnson.com and uh, have a look and see. Or they'll probably refer you to a dealer in your area. Obviously, I don't know that they do this direct, but um, at any rate, uh, look out for the new ART88 all-tube preamplifier. Okay, so the third item on the agenda today is from Focal Name. Uh, they have announced uh, this month and month of November the opening of what they're calling a Focal Name powered by name, a Focal powered by name space. It's uh, supposed to be a bricks and mortar uh, type of store. Uh, this newest one is opened in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, that follows the openings of Focal powered by name space stores in Houston, 
Dallas, Austin, and then also in Miami, Florida. Um, so if you're in any of those areas and want to take a look at some, what I understand is some of their pretty high-end Utopia models of various different color schemes uh, that Focal offers are supposed to be showcased at these stores, uh, that would be interesting, um, obviously, uh, to, to, uh, to have a look at those. So if you live in one of those markets and want to take a look at some Focal powered by name gear, there you go. Okay, the fourth item on the list is news from MagnaPan. Um, they uh, have announced the introduction of their LRS Plus floor sta sta standing um, panel speaker. Now, the uh, LRS model is the entry-level um, uh, MagnaPan model. The LRS had been in the marketplace for several years, and now they have updated it to what they call an LRS Plus. I'm not exactly certain what uh, differences uh, but I know that in the past, like I owned a pair of the 1.7s for several years, and then they came out with what they called a 1.7i. I'd never heard that speaker, but everyone said that it was an improvement over the uh, 1.7. And I'm assuming that if they introduce an LRS Plus, it will be an improvement over the additional, uh, the original LRS. Um, no word on whether, if you're an LRS owner, uh, if your speaker is upgradable to the Plus status, um, if it's anything like it was with the 1.7 going to the 1.7i, I know for certain, since I was an owner of that speaker, that it was not upgradable to 1.7i status. So uh, that speaker, the, the LRS Plus, is available now, I believe, and I think the price of that speaker is $995 US dollars a pair. Um, obviously, you'll have to get with your dealer to have them on order. My understanding is there's going to be a wait for this speaker. So if you're interested in it, I think you need to get in line uh, sooner rather than later. All right, that's the, that's the MagnaPan news. Let's move on to the next item. Okay, the fifth item on the list today is news from the good folks at Macintosh Laboratories up in Binghampton, New York. Their website is curiously showing uh, the introduction of something that they called hybrid, hybrid drive technology. And what they're basically getting at here is the marriage between a tube amp or a tube product and solid state. Now, I don't understand what's really new about this hybrid drive technology, although they're touting it as you know, brand new. It's all over. They splashed it all over their website. Um, yeah. So you go back to the MC901. This has got to be a th almost going on its third year now, and it has hybrid drive technology. It's a hybrid amp between tube and solid state, and a number of other Macintosh products that have been out for a while. Um, you know, the MA352 and the, the uh, MA12000, it's been out a year at least, and it all incorporates the same basic technology, but they've gone so far as to uh, even prepare a logo, which is, you, know, you can see it's the, uh, the KT88 tube in a solid state, like integrated circuit or something sort of married together, and, and that uh, forms the basis for this um, hybrid drive technology. I think it's a little bit um, odd, let's just put, put it that way, since it seems, seemingly has been out for a while. I guess maybe they just decided it's time that we actually try to put a name on this or uh, some ownership to it, so to speak. All right, but in other Macintosh news, Macintosh uh, during the month of November has introduced a new product. It's the MDA200. This is a standalone digital to analog converter. Uh, I understand that it has the Macintosh DA2 module in it, which is Macintosh's sort of, you know, it can be removed if they introduce a DA3 module somewhere down the road, which would be an upgrade or improvement to the DA2. The idea is a couple of screws, you, you know, unplug it, plug the new one in, and you're, you're good, you're upgraded, all right? This unit also is supposed to sport seven inputs, um, and it also has two, uh, seven digital inputs, and it also has uh, both uh, balanced and, and analog output. So it's new to the market. I uh, haven't heard any uh, one say anything about it yet. I'm not certain if, you know, if anybody even really owns one at this point, but it does support DSD-512, 24192. I think it really does also support 32192 resolution. And if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the suggested MSRP on this product is going to be right at $4,000 US. So if you're in the market for a standalone DAC, check out the Macintosh MDA 200. 
Okay, so the sixth item up on the list is news from Shit Audio, and that is S-C-H-I-I-T, okay? I didn't come up with that name. They did. Don't hold me responsible for it. They have announced um, on November the 9th that they are uh, releasing an upgrade, upgrade to their reference top of the line back the Yiggy. Uh, I believe this is now going to be called the Yiggy Plus. I'm not going to even get into trying to pronounce the full name of this thing because it's weird. Um, but uh, it is supposed to have uh, additions now. They've added something called NOS module and also phase inversion and a remote control for this stack. Um, it, curiously and interesting, and I think this is something very commendable to shit because the price of this new Yiggy Plus DAC is the same exact price as the introduction in 2014 of the original Yiggy DAC, and I think that is 22 uh, 2299 US and it ranges up to 2799 US um, depending upon options I think the color of the chassis changes the price a little bit um, uh, that type of thing um, but really quite remarkable that uh, eight years of, of production and they're able to upgrade a product add new features to it put a remote control and still charge the same exact price for it that they charged back in 2014 I, that is commendable so well done shit okay you get a thumbs up from me for that now if you're an original Yigi owner and you want to upgrade to the Yigi Pl Plus you can um, I think the price, depending upon uh, maybe chassis color, is uh, $499 to $599. So um, a really, really good situation that they would um, upgrade their product and, and, and just make it better and not leave their existing owners behind in the dust. Uh, I really do um, uh, commend them for that. So uh, they, get, they get the thumbs up. All right, so the seventh item on the list, and this one is one of my faves, Voxative Berlin has released the a new system they had been on something well one of the products that they had was the 9.87 system it's a speaker system sort of a modular speaker system and now they've introduced uh, at the Capital Audio Fest just a couple of weeks ago the 9.88 system was unveiled there um, Voxative is a audio manufacturer in Berlin. They really sort of fly under the radar. I had never heard of them until I visited their room in 2018 in, in Denver. And uh, I have to be honest with you, out of all the rooms that I visited, out of all the equipment that I heard over that three-day weekend, the Voxative 9.87 system was hands down the best sound to my ears at that show. Nobody else was even close. It was so intoxicating it was it, it just drew you in it was just such beautiful music um, I visited that room five times over the course of, of, of those days so uh, they've introduced the 9.88 uh, system now what that does is it basically adds what they call the dot zero one mid module so you've got the uh, monitor the uh, the P the PI or the PI monitor at the top they've introduced a, 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 a mid monitor to the middle and then the base monitor the, the, the PI base or the PI base is, is still at the bottom so if you are an existing 9.87 system owner you can upgrade it so I simply pulling the two modules apart, dropping in the .01 monitor, and then putting them back together, the mid, the mid monitor, and putting them back together, and then you have a 9.88 system. So not sure exactly what the price on this is going to be. Uh, if my memory serves, you know, it was pretty expensive. It's, it's another one of those mid to upper five figure um, um, systems. Um, but you can go to voxative.berlin.com, and that's V-O-X-A-T-I-V, Boxative.berlin.com, and they have a lot of information on their website about this new speaker uh, system that they've just introduced at the Capital Audio Fest just two weeks ago. I am very much interested in hearing this system, and I will be looking out for it at the next show that I attend sometime in 2023. We'll just see what the, the show schedules are going to be, and I'll pick a couple probably to try to, to try to hit. All right, so let's move on to the next uh, and the final story. All right, the, final, the eighth and final story of the day is going to be that of Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. Yep, it's back. So if you've been following audio, you've been subscribing to some different audio-related channels, you've been reading the internet, you're subscribing to any of the audio magazines or trade magazines, you already know, back in the summer, 
of 2022. It was unveiled, you know, big scandal at Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab was not really releasing all analog um, uh, vinyl records like they had been claiming that they had been introducing a digital step in between, and it created quite a stir. I stayed out of the fray. I mean, it, it really did uh, bring out a lot of, lot of opinions of uh, both sides of the aisle, a lot of people fighting with each other over it. Um, I didn't want to get involved in all of that. But what is a result, and obviously we're in the United States here, and one of the big things in the United States is people like to sue people. And that is apparently what has happened. Now, the lawsuits involving Mobile Fidelity came out in the mid to late part of August. So they've been out a little while. I only just found out about it a couple of days ago. Uh, so there is one gentleman from North Carolina who was the lead plaintiff in one case. And then I believe there are two people from the state of Washington who also have filed uh, class action suits. Now, these are being filed in the North and federal court in the Northern District of Illinois, where Mobile Fidelity is headquartered. And I was able to read the full 28-page suit of the North Carolina um, um, lead plaintiff. And I have to say that there's something there, okay? And I think Mobile Fidelity needs to be quite concerned about where this could potentially go. I'm going to monitor this case uh, through their PACER system and uh, keep you updated as to how it's going. I mean, obviously, you can file a complaint against someone and you can say all kinds of things, okay? Well, they have an opportunity to come in and answer it and to defend themselves. Obviously, there'll be motions filed. There'll be procedural, you know, objections taken. Um, obviously, Mobile Fidelity is going to do everything they can to keep this from being certified as a class. They're, they're going to try to get this case dismissed, kicked out. There'll be motions for summary judgment, things along those lines. But eventually, if, if the plaintiffs are able to overcome all of those efforts to get this case out of court, um, then, you know, there's going to be discovery and, you know, we're going to be requesting emails and so forth. Um, the thing that is a bit worrying is that the demand is already stated at about $5 million. And for a company of mobile fidelity size, that would probably put them into bankruptcy if there was actually a judgment rendered against them for that amount of money. Now, with class action suits, what happens? You know, I mean, what are they going to do? How are they going to settle this? You know, is everybody going to get a coupon for $50 off their next album? I, I don't really know. I'm a member of that class, probably, because I have Donald Fagan's The Nightfly. That was the Ultra Disc One Step. That was part of it. I think it was in 2012. And, you know, you clearly see in the little placard that they put inside the box, it's got original tapes, you know, little reel-to-reels, and then it goes straight to the locker. And no mention made of that DSD step. So I'm... Not interested personally. I, I really could care less. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Mobile Fidelity's releases. I always felt, to me personally, and to my ears and in my system, that they just lack a liveliness to them. Um, uh, that you know, even though your original recordings may have a little more surface noise or be a little bit less than perfect as far as black black backgrounds and quietness. There's more life in them in, to me, and that, that really matters. And so I've not really bought a lot of the Mobile Fidelity releases, so I'm not interested in being part of any of this. But I wanted to bring this up in case you hadn't heard, uh, or this is news to you, certainly news to me, even though this filing was back in August, that um, uh, they are two, at least two, and possibly more. Once I can get back into Pacer and start digging around and see, maybe there are other filings as well uh, to be following. And... Um, I will come back and update this, and I'm just going to stay on top of this story until it, it, it comes to the end, and then we'll see. You know, the chips are just going to fall where they may. And uh, I think the, you know, if I had to guess, you know, in the long run, down the road, after this is all over with, and, and this whole thing is kind of becoming a closed chapter uh, in, in life, the result is probably going to be that there's going to be less transparency in the the vinyl reproduction business rather than more. Because I think, you know, the makers of these records, uh, the remastering people are going to probably want to just not really say, um, you know, what they're doing. And in that way, if you're quiet and you don't make any disclosures, that means you can tell no lies and that will ultimately protect you. And so, yeah, I just think that um, transparency is going to suffer as a result of all of this. I hope I'm wrong, but Somehow I just don't think I am. So, all right, that's it. That is, this is episode 10, I believe, uh, the 10th uh, vlog that I posted on this channel. And the first of the inaugural it will be the inaugural um, industry spotlight. So I hope you enjoyed the content. Um, please give us a thumbs up. 
hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified whenever new content appears on the channel, that little bell icon, smash that guy and you will be notified. Thank you very much for watching. And I want to thank each and every one of our subscribers. Um, if I could thank you personally, I would. Uh, when I did the audio room tour, I was just overwhelmed by the response um, of, of, uh, that I got from that. Uh, so many great comments. I really want to thank you for that. And it's making this, trying to produce this, this, this channel and this uh, vlog a lot of fun for me. So um, again, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will go through my audio file journey in life together. Thank you very much. I will be seeing you again.